what they've done here, and a lot of versions do this, so I can't just, you know, but they, they've taken the word forgiveness, but the Greek word for there is aphesis. Now, aphesis, if you look it up, it's Strong's number 859. Ephesus is more accurately translated as remission or liberation. Well, what does that mean? Well, we can take the Ephesus Greek word and we can tie it back in to a Hebrew word that is apparent in the Hebrew scriptures. And this will give us a greater understanding as what this terminology is leading towards. The Hebrew root of Ephesus is Yovel. And in English, we would read that as Jubilee. So this is a Jubilee from sin. In, in Leviticus 25, the whole con, the whole chapter for context, but just for the sake of, um, I'm just going to read 10 and 11. Maybe before you, I've got that word pulled up. It's interesting because it's in, in the Strong's concordance, it's eight, uh, 859, but it's a sending away, a letting go, a release, pardon. Mm -hmm. So you're you're kind of pointing back, this is, this is. This is the Exodus. This is the greater Exodus we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's yeah. interesting. And because the Jubilee in Leviticus 25 is described as, you are to make the 50th year holy and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It is a Jubilee to you, which each of you is to return to his own property and each of you to return to his family. That 50th year will be your Jubilee. So here we see freedom. We see liberation. And what is he referring to? The blood of the covenant isn't exactly forgiving sins. He was already doing that. When he would heal people, he could forgive them. He already had the authority to forgive mm. sins. But this is a this is a return. This is a release. And this is freedom from the power of sin. This is my contention to you, is that that this moment, this this setting up is is the kingdom of darkness is being defeated. It's going to be defeated by the blood of the Lamb on that on that cross to make a greater exodus from sin and be free from sin. Mm. Forgiveness. You know, we're going to talk more about what we do for forgiveness here soon, but but I think that this conversation is is a bigger picture of of the the stronghold the, the stronghold that sin has over us. We get to have freedom from that. Mm. So and so it's a deliverance. The he's he's symbolizing through the Last Supper, symbolizing uh, that this is the greater Exodus, and it's it's not an emphasis only on the fact that we get our sins forgiven, but it's more. You're, you're saying more an emphasis on the fact that we get delivered from our slavery, our bondage yeah. to sin, not just outward actions, but the internal state of our hearts. We, we, what Jesus has done, what he's showing the disciples symbolically is that through my flesh, through my blood, through the, the what I am doing in the work I'm in the, on the cross, I am, I'm basically is like the greater parting of the Red Sea, right? Yeah. It's like, this is, this is yeah. the true parting of the Red Sea where like you're internally, you got sin and condemnation, you know, before you and behind you is condemnation kind of, of, of the yeah. wrath of God almost. Absolutely. And, and Jesus is the one who has come and parted the, the Red Sea so that we can pass through. And so that's, yeah, that's great. And something yeah. that, you know, maybe before you move on there that I just want to point out is, is you brought up the fact that here in the Last Supper, Jesus is instituting, reinstituting what they would say the the, the Passover, the New Covenant. Um, what's what's interesting that you just touched on is that people were already forgiven prior to this. The disciples were already forgiven, right? Like you see, before they ate the supper, he washed them and said, "You're clean, right? You're already clean." Yeah. Um, yeah. If you go back to Mark two nine, you know you see Jesus he healing the the paralytic, the paralyzed man, and he says, "Your sins are forgiven." The interesting thing is that he this this man was not instructed by Jesus to to go and keep Passover, yeah. <laughs> and he didn't say, "Now listen, I've healed you." I know you need sins forgiven, so what you need to do is is I'm going to provide this Passover yeah. bread and wine. You yeah, need to and you got to wait till the first month. You got to do it on a certain day. day. That might be 11 months from now, so hopefully you don't die. Yes, in the meantime. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's yeah. Ridiculous. So that's something that yeah that I, I think is worth thinking about yeah. is that you look at the the Gospels and there's many 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 examples of people already being forgiven, um, completely independent from from them observing any form of this Passover, uh, this, this eating of the bread and drinking the wine. So 